Today, I'm off to meet the human hamster. I'm just picking up my producer now. Good morning, you're on camera. I'm meeting the human hamster as part of Just Giving's fundraising awards. Every year, Just Giving celebrates some fundraisers who've done some crazy fundraising. So we've arrived in Southend and we are just approaching Dean's house now. So let's go and meet this crazy guy and see his human hamster wheel. Oh. Like yes, Dean, so, nice to you? meet you. How are you Good. doing? Dean, wiry in frame and beardy in face. I instantly liked Dean. He had a great energy about him. I hadn't seen the wheel before, so I was very excited. And under this great big blue thing here is, is my pride and joy. For all you techie engineering types, here's Dean talking me through the construction. And that's my wheel. So it was designed on 3D CAD. Um, so I'm a, I'm a computer-aided designer. I'm, I'm, I'm an engineer and mechanical designer. We made a prototype in Lego just to test that theory. What we had done is all the wood, uh, sort of plywood uh, for the sides uh, and the runners as well, because they had to be perfectly round, we had them laser cut from plywood. And I've double layered it so it's, it's got a nice wide running surface and they are all perfect. It comes apart into, into six sections or three sections is easier for transportation. And it's, and it's really just a, a wheel sat on some rollers. So there's two rollers at the, at the back and two rollers at the front, and then two rollers, smaller rollers, just in the middle, which take my weight. So that's my, where my center of gravity is. It went together pretty easily. Um, having the Lego model did actually help with thinking about how it was gonna run and how it was gonna come apart and the stability of it. Uh, we'd built it in five weeks and then I had seven weeks to train. I'd been running in it in its raw form the week before, I decided to paint it. So we painted it with decking paint so, it wouldn't, so I wouldn't slip if it was wet. Um, whether that worked or not, I don't know. Then two days before the event, I decided that I'd probably be getting a bit tired. I'd only run two hours in it maximum. So 24 hours is a little bit different. So we decided to put some handlebars on there. I cut up the handlebars off my bike and with some bottle cages as well. Uh, and that also holds the bike computer, uh, which gives us our distance. So they were a very late addition. Uh, and in the event, I, I end up having my hands tied uh, using buffs, like the sweatbands. Uh, had my hands tied to the handlebars so I wouldn't fall off. And I could close my eyes then, and I knew that I wouldn't go anywhere, so I stayed in the middle. Uh, and that's why the black line was there as well, so I'd have something to, to focus on that was going round, so I stayed in the middle. It's a thing of beauty in my eyes, but I'm sure not everyone else sees it that way. Dean tinkered around with the wheel, setting it up. His feat of endurance was incredible, and I've got him talking about his training in a moment, but first, it's important for Dean to explain why he did it. Well, I'm a keen supporter of Southend Hospital. Both my nans uh, suffered with dementia, uh, so when they told me about their uh, new dementia pill they were launching, uh, I was more than happy to, to be involved in that. Um, it's a course very close to my heart, so it seemed perfect. I can run, um, so why not uh, do something with that uh, to do these events? Um, maybe I inspire other people to, to be involved uh, and enthuse people to maybe do similar activities. So I had to learn to run in it because you're constantly running uphill. We lifted the back up so it was on a two degree slope, which meant that my centre of gravity and where I was placing my foot on every step wasn't as high. Uh, but it was still three inches higher on every step. We calculated it for something like going from base camp to Everest three times over that 24 hours with the amount of inclination I had to do. I had to stop going out on the roads and running and just run up hills and then run in this. And that was all the training I could do. Mentally, it was very, very tough. The scenery wasn't changing, I wasn't getting anywhere. Uh, and being in the public eye uh, was, was quite daunting at times. Uh, but I had to, had to get used to that and, and that was probably the, the hardest part for me to deal with. For me. I had people standing there for hours watching me. It was time to jump in the wheel myself. I was uh, a little anxious, but I was very excited. Yeah, it's fun. 
speak so I'm just like, <laughs> the, I'm still uh, kind of figuring out what I make of it but it was it's more efficient than I thought it would be. I only ran for a couple of minutes but it was surprisingly enjoyable to run on but I don't think I could have managed 24 straight hours. <laughs> nice! Oh that's amazing! Oh Dean this is so cool. Thank you so much for <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. That's really cool. 